In this lesson, we will look at formatting cells and ranges of cells in our spreadsheet. So we will do things like merge cells, modify alignment and indentation, format using the format paters, wrapping text within cells, and applying cell styles. So I'll start with the last one in that list, the applying of a cell style. And that is a pretty straightforward thing to do. And most of the things that we'll do in this entire lesson as you get comfortable with the format cells and ranges objective is going to be done from the home tab of the ribbon. Specifically, it's going to be either in the alignment grouping, in the number grouping, or the styles grouping. So we're starting on the Excel Like a Boss Sandbox and on the tab 2018 Attendance. I've got this cell here that is A3, it's key metrics. And let's say I want to apply a cell style. All I have to do is go up to the styles, cell styles, and then I can hover over any of these here. And let's say I want an accent one, or let's say I want a heading one as a cell style. Notice that they are not necessarily mutually exclusive. And notice also that I have a way to remove the cell style without having to undo several times or without having to delete and recreate the cell. And the way that I do that is I go to the editing group and in the editing group, I've got this clear button and this clear dropdown. So I can delete everything in the cell, just remove the formatting, the contents, the comments or hyperlinks. So what I'll do here is I will use the clear formats and that will take me back just to the text in the cell, which using this particular style that is in use for the worksheet, it's Calibri font with 12 point font. So if you wanna do that to a range, which you may more typically do on a header row type of a thing, I'm gonna select all of the cells in this header row, this range of cells. Then I'll go to cell styles and I'll choose one of my headings. So let's go ahead and give heading two a click and now you've got a different format for those items. Now, can you do the same thing with a format painter or can you accomplish the same thing? Yes, you can. Of course, the format painter works very similar to any other time that you're gonna use the format painter in other applications. It will copy all of the formatting that you may have used, in this case, in a cell. So I can click on that one right there, click there, and now you have copied over the formatting that was used on whatever cell was selected before you hit the format painter. If you double click the format painter, then you can apply the formatting multiple times before you hit escape. Another thing to keep in mind is the merge and center options that you have. So I'll give you one example here. You actually have several. You have merge and center, merge across, merge cells. If you hover over these items here, it will give you a little more information about what to expect when you do the merge and center or the merge across operations. Most of the time, in my opinion, you're gonna use the merge and center. Let me show you how it works. If I click on this cell, which is A3, you see that I have key metrics as the contents of the cell. If I select now the range, if I go all the way across my table here, and then I click on merge and center. Now, if I just click the button, it does the merge and center, it does the top one. Otherwise, I will achieve these other effects with the dropdown. I will be able to click the dropdown and either perform merge across or merge cells. So let me show you the difference very quickly. Uh, if I do go ahead and undo that with the same range selected, if I were to merge the cells, it keeps the alignment of that text still on the left-hand side of the new merge cell here. So this is one big cell that was created from merging all of these selected cells. I can still align the text in the middle of that supercell that I've created by using that item right there. So as with many things Microsoft Office related, there is usually more than one way to accomplish the same effect. So I encourage you just to take a quick look at your merge and center options when you select a range of cells. So before we leave this topic, let's go ahead and look at wrap text, which is another item that you should be familiar with, wrapping text within cells. So if I select this, my source, Notice that it is not wrapped because if I select cell E1 up here in the name box, there's nothing in cell E1 and the entire string of text here is in D1, but the text is not wrapped. So because there's nothing in E1, you see that the text can go into the adjacent cells. Well, if I select wrap text here, now it changes that. And so of course, when you are wrapping text, if you don't like the effect, you can always adjust your 
row height or your column width. And then further, you can also align your text either top align, center align, or bottom align. And it was bottom align to start out with in this example. The final item I want to point out is the formatting that goes along with the numeric formatting or just any kind of cell formatting that you might have in your worksheet. So if you'll notice here on this attendance tab that I've got some items here that are year over year changes and these are being expressed as numeric values which because they are 0 .05, 0 .03 we may be able to better recognize them as percentages. So in this example here, let's just select a range of cells here. And if you notice that the numeric formatting, the number formatting is general, mean it's just essentially text in the form of numbers in a cell. But we can change how Excel formats that by using the percent style in this example here. So that certainly can make things a lot more human relatable by changing the numeric style from general to percentage. In fact, all of these items can be selected with the drop down here, all the different uh, numeric values. And there are even more formatting items than you see here in the drop down. If you click on that, now you get to the many different types of numeric values that you can use. So as I cancel out of this, let's just take one more example here. Let's say I wanted to express this as a, not as a number, but instead as currency using an accounting number format, or I could use the drop down here to choose currency. If I clicked on that, you may see something like this, but the reason why this is because given the column width, it doesn't allow me to put all the information in there. So that doesn't necessarily mean an error condition, the number, the pound, symbols in a cell it just means that the change you've made to the formatting is not allowing for enough room in the column. So if I give that a double click to resize the column and auto fit the column, which is taking its width from the text string here in cell H4, you'll see that now that these numbers are represented as currency and I can even click here to increase the decimal places or decrease the decimal places. If I don't need the exact sense on these figures, then I can do something like that. So by becoming familiar with the alignment tools, the numeric tools, and the styles tools, you will be very well prepared to understand the formatting of cells and ranges that is necessary for the 727.